Oh my god, can you please stop that? Stop what? You know, that, that, that thing in the middle of the car, that, that, that fidget toy-like thing you're... You, you, keep on, you keep on moving it. It's, it's making me uncomfortable. Eh? Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. I mean, I drive too. I don't need to do that. Get out. Welcome to the third part of our How a Car Works series. We've explained how an engine works in our first video, and we explained why you need a clutch in our second video. Now, if you haven't watched those videos yet, I do recommend watching them first. Links are down below. And now, on this video, we're gonna talk about the transmission. Why do we need this contraption between our engine and the tires? And note that for this video, we're gonna talk about the manual transmission because it's the most basic iteration. Yes, there are many other types of automatic transmissions out there, but those are just fancier ways of implementing the manual transmission. So it all still boils down to how a manual transmission works. We will also be using figures from a 1998 Honda EK9 Civic Type R. It's one of the best front-wheel drive cars ever made, so it'll put into perspective the importance of the transmission. And for simplicity, we're gonna refer to it as the EK9 from now on. Also a disclaimer, the computations, figures, and simulations that we might show here might not be 100% accurate. Since you know, I'm, I'm not an engineer. I'm just Emi Kurama, your resident automotive VTuber. A figment of your imagination when you forget to take your pills. But these figures should be accurate enough to get the point across. Now on to the first point. We mentioned before that an engine usually idles at around 800 RPM or 800 revolutions per minute. Now if you directly connect that engine to a tire, we bump into our first problem. Now stay with me, we'll do a bit of basic math here. I promise it's worth it, it'll, it'll make everything so much clearer. Now let's take the relatively small tire from the EK9. It's a 195515. Now that size tire has a diameter of almost 60 centimeters. So that gives us a tire circumference of 188.5 centimeters. That means when the tire rotates one full revolution, it travels 188.5 centimeters. Now imagine that tire being directly connected to our engine that spins at a minimum of 800 RPM. So let's multiply 188.5 centimeters to 800 revolutions per minute. We get 150,800 centimeters per minute or 90 kilometers per hour, 55 miles per hour in freedom units. Your minimum speed is going to be 90 kilometers per hour. That is, if you can even get the car going in the first place. Imagine trying to let the clutch out but needing the car to be going at least 90 kilometers per hour before fully releasing it. You'll burn the clutch since you'll need to rub it for so long before engaging. But besides that problem, the, the car won't even have enough power to go in the first place. What do I mean not enough power? Well, that brings us to our second point. According to AI computations that I will no longer double check because it sounds correct enough, to accelerate a 1000 kilogram car to 10 kilometers per hour in five seconds requires 555 newtons. In that scenario, I'm being conservative here because normally when you set off from a stop, it won't take you five seconds to get to 10 kilometers per hour. Now let's have a look see at the specs of the EK9's engine. The B16B produces 136 kilowatts and 160 newton meters of torque. 160 newton meters! And that's at full throttle, at 7,500 RPMs. The engine will be producing significantly less power at close to idle setting off speeds. That is far from the 555 newtons we need to get the car to 10 kilometers per hour in 5 seconds. Now, to more easily visualize this, we're gonna convert it to freedom units. So that's 182 horsepower and 118 pound-foot of torque. Do you know what a pound-foot of torque is? First of all, what is torque? Torque is a measure of rotational force which is apt because our engine produces rotational movement. And a pound-foot of torque is the amount of twisting force you generate when you put one pound of weight on a lever arm that's one foot away from the axis. Oh no, I don't have elbow trackers, so... Yeah! So visually, what does our EK9's engine's torque look like? And this is the reason why we converted it to freedom units. Because I am around 110 pounds. 5 foot 4 by the way, 110 pounds. 163 centimeters in non-freedom units. So what does our EK9's engine torque look like when we directly couple it to the wheel? That is literally like me standing on the end of a ruler that's attached to the center of the wheel. I am producing 100 pound foot torque on this axle in this example. Th th that's not a lot. For reference, this 350 USD impact wrench can produce 1,000 pound-foot of torque. So the EK's 118 pound-foot really ain't a lot. 
So to simulate this, here in BMNG, I modified this car to have direct drive to the wheels. It won't even move forward from a stop. And if by some miracle you do get the car going at 90 km per hour, you're only at 800 RPM. So even if you put your foot down to the floor full throttle, the car doesn't even accelerate. So how do we address these problems? If you've been liking this video so far, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please don't forget to comment down below because that helps our algorithm a lot. We also have a Discord where you can hang out with the other Chromatics. And you can also follow me on my other socials below so you guys will know what I'm up to when I'm not on YouTube. Now, it's actually not that complicated to solve this problem. We all learned this simple concept in physics class in school and it's called leverage. You know how when you hold a camera or an action cam on like a, on like a selfie stick tripod thing? The longer the stick, the heavier the camera seems to be. The longer the stick, the more torque the camera exerts on your wrist. That is leverage. And with that, a 5 kilogram weight can lift a 10 kilogram weight if you give it long enough leverage. Now going back to the me standing on a ruler example, on a 1 foot bar, I'm producing 110 pound foot of torque on this axle. But if we make the bar 2 feet, I'm now generating 220 pound foot. And at 3 feet, we get 330 pound foot. Do, do, you, do you guys get the pattern here? It's like magic, but it's not magic. It's physics. So how, how do we apply this to our car? Introducing gears. The bigger the gear, the longer the leverage. Over here, we can see it in action. Our input gear here on the left are all spinning at 30 RPM using a gear with 16 teeth and is producing a torque of 100 pound foot. If we pair the 16 tooth gear with another 16 tooth gear, there's no actual additional leverage. It's just one is to one. Hence, our output RPM and torque are the same. 30 RPM, 100 pound foot. On our next example, we pair the 16 tooth with the 32 tooth gear. Our gear ratio and leverage is now 2 is to 1. That means it takes two complete revolutions of the input shaft to turn our output shaft one rotation. Hence, our output now is slower at 15 RPM, but now with 200 pound foot of torque. Now let's take this further. Our 16 tooth now is paired with a 48 tooth, so that's a ratio of 3 is to 1. The input shaft needs three full revolutions for the input to spin the output one revolution. So now we are outputting 10 RPM, but with 300 pound foot of torque. Great, we have solved both problems. One, we now have more torque to spin the wheels. And number two, we've slowed it down. So our minimum speed is no longer 90 kilometers per hour at 800 RPM. Now going back to our EK9, setting off in first gear, our effective total gear ratio is 14.21 is to one. That means if we divide 800 RPMs by 14.21, our tire will only be spinning at 56 RPM when our engine is spinning at 800 RPM. Remember, our tire circumference is 188.5 cm. Multiply that by 56 RPM. That's only 10,556 centimeters per minute or 6.33 kilometers per hour. So now we only really need to crawl the car to 7 kilometers per hour before we can fully release the clutch. Not only have we increased the torque, made our speeds more realistic, but we're also saving the clutch since we don't need to be slipping it too much. And now at full throttle, 7,500 RPMs, our 118 pounds of torque multiplied by 14.21, that gives us 1,676.78 pounds of torque. More than enough power to propel the car forward. Now let's run that simulation on our car on BMNG. Ah. There's our next problem. Our engine can only actually rev so high. To have a very usable setting off gear ratio, in effect, our speed is limited. Okay, so to fix that, let's try to use another gear ratio, slightly longer. Okay, great, we're now hitting 100 km per hour, but we're in such a high RPM. The engine is stressed and we're using too much fuel. Okay, now let's configure it to be less stressed at 100 km per hour. Okay, great. Now we're economically driving, low RPM, cruising speed, 100 km per hour. But now when the car stops, it has a hard time setting off. So, what is the solution to this problem? 
So it seems like the car needs different gear ratios in order to complete different tasks. So you guys see where we're going here? You guys see where we're going here? And that is why we need a transmission, aka also known as a gearbox. It's a box with gears in it so we can select the proper gear ratio for the speed we're going. Mind blown. And also, spoiler alert, there's also one more gear reduction mechanism in the car called the final drive. So we have the transmission, then the final drive, then to the tire. It's a spoiler because the final drive is in the differential, which is the topic of our next video. But of course, it's worth mentioning because we're talking about gear ratios in this video. So for reference, this is the gear ratios of an EK9 Type R. So that's first to fifth, reverse, and our final gear ratio. Now you might be wondering, why do we need a final drive on top of our transmission instead of just, you know, tuning the transmission to be the correct ratio in the first place? You know how some cars come with diesel and gasoline variants? Now those engines rev and deliver power differently, so you need different transmission ratios. So usually the transmission that's built for the diesel won't be the same as the transmission built for the gasoline. Even different diameter tires will alter the final effective gear ratios. So instead of manufacturers creating one engine and one transmission per car, they can have an engine transmission combo and just alter the final drive to fit several cars depending on, you know, how big they are, how big the tires are, and how heavy they are. So the final drive is an easy way to tune an engine transmission combo to the chassis it's going. Going back to our EK9, our final effective gear ratio in first gear is actually 14.21 is to 1. Now to get that gear ratio with just a pair of gears, your input gear will be really, really small and your output gear will be really, really large. And that big size difference creates a weakness. Since your input gear is so small, there's so little metal material on it, the chance of you breaking that little gear is actually pretty high. And that is why racers will tell you that the strongest gear in a car is usually fourth gear. Because fourth gear usually is one is to one ratio. Your input gear is just as big as your output gear. Hence, in order for transmission not to be made out of glass, the closer to one is to one your gear set is, the stronger it tends to be. And thanks to the final drive, we can have our transmissions closer to one is to one. And there you have it, congratulations, you now know the reasons why we have a transmission. And the final drive. Again, if you guys found this video helpful and you want to see more, please don't forget to subscribe. On our next How A Car Works video, we're gonna tackle the differential. And please don't forget to press the like button if you like the video. And why not drop a comment? It'll really, really help our algorithm. Al 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 algorithm, algorithm. I'm only able to make these videos thanks to your guys' support. Also, another way to support this channel is if you're planning to buy gamer stuff, so you can get 10% off if you use our product code EMIKOROMA or click on our link below. Also, a big shout out to our manual supremacists out there who would rather be fiddling with their stick than riding D all day. Ciao. Don't forget to subscribe, chat, and watch our older videos. Yeah. Not a cat, by the way. I'm a wolf. Anime, yokai, wolf girl. Ooh.